Hello and welcome back to PMOD Monthly. I'm James Colvin and today we're going to review some of the communication protocols commonly used by Digilent PMODs. It's not a good idea, especially in electronics, to just plug something into a random spot and hope it works. Rather, you have to make sure that the communication and power lines are connected to where they're supposed to go. Communication is key in any relationship, electronic or otherwise. Let's start with SPI. Serial peripheral interface, which is what this PMOD joystick uses, was a communication protocol devel originally developed by Motorola. The SPI is a full duplex protocol, meaning that both the master device and the slave device, which it's talking to, are able to communicate with each other at the same time. The way that this works is the master device will send out a start condition to the slave device. The master device will then send, pulse its clock line, or SCK, which you can see here. And then both the master and the slave device will send out it, their 8 bits of data on the MOSI, master out, slave in, and then MISO, master in, slave out, at the same time and then the master will issue a stop condition by releasing the slave select line SS or CS for chip select back to a high state. Now I'm going to show you an SPI demo using the chip kit WF32 in the PMOD DA4. So we plug our chip kit WF32 in, turn on our power supply, and what this demo is doing is it's sending over SPI a stream of data to the PMOD DA4 to run these LEDs at different levels of voltages. And so it sends out a high voltage, then not quite as high, then even lower for a total of four, and it just cycles through over and over showing the different brightness levels on the LEDs. And that's SPI. Another commonly used communication protocol is UART. UART used by this PMOD BT2 here, was originally developed by Gordon Bell at Digital Equipment Corporation. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. It gets to have the universal name because it is so configurable. You can configure the data rate, the number of bits that are being transferred, and its communication style. UART can be configured to be in full duplex like SPI, or in half duplex mode, where the two devices are only able to talk to each other one at a time, or in simplex mode, where the data only goes in one direction. But because it's so configurable, both devices have to be configured exactly the same to ensure that data is received correctly on both ends. So the way that the data is sent out is that the device that wants to transmit data will pull the data line to a low voltage state to issue a start condition and then send out the five to nine bits of data at the set data rate to the other device. Once the expected number of bits have been transferred, the uh, data line will be brought back to a high voltage state as a stop condition terminating the communication session. That's a general overview of UART. Another major communication protocol used in PMOS is I squared C. I squared C is different than SPI and UART because while SPI and UART are only able to connect with a, one device, I squared C can actually communicate with potentially a large number of devices. This is because it has a communication bus line so multiple devices can all be connected in a daisy chain format to one another. The way that it's able to communicate with so many devices is that the master device will issue a start condition by pulling the data line low. All the other devices on the line will then listen to the next 8 bits for the address using the clock signal and the data line. SCL for the clock signal and SDA for the data line. If the device that it's calling is on the line, that slave device will issue an acknowledgement saying, indicating that it's on the line. All the other devices that weren't called will then get off the line and wait for another start condition before listening for their address again to see if they're called. Upon receiving the acknowledgement, the master would then will send out the register that it wants to talk to on the I squared C device. And after receiving another acknowledgement, will send out the data. 
This communication can then occur for as long as it needs to, as long as acknowledged bits are being received. Once the master wants to terminate the communication, it can issue a stop condition by bringing the data line, SDA, back to a high voltage state. Here we have an I2C demo using the chip kit WF32 in the PMOD CDC1, which uses I2C as I mentioned. So we can, I already have the sketch loaded, so we can boot up our WF32. And the way that this demo is working is we have our SDA and SCL lines for I2C being pulled up to a high voltage level with these pull up resistors. And when I get close to one of these buttons has a capacitive touch. A signal is sent out saying, hey, there is a potential data on the line. It reads it through I2C, and it will light up one of the corresponding LEDs once I get close to the buttons. And that's I2C. Another widely used communication style by digital PMODs is GPIO, General Purpose Input Output. This isn't necessarily a communication protocol, per se, because there's no specified data line or clock line, but rather it just has a bunch of general purpose inputs and outputs, GPIO. These inputs and outputs can be used for a variety of functions to send out high and low voltage signals, like this PMOD button here to indicate if a button is pressed or not pressed. Or it can send out a pulse width modulation signal if you wanted to drive a motor using a PMOD HB5. Or you could send out um, an audio signal through one of these general purpose pins with a PMOD AMP2. You could even use these general purpose pins because they are, in fact, just, they are just pins to simulate any of these other communication protocols that we have presented or any other protocol that you wanted to. It's very handy. You may have noticed that a number of the communication protocols, when, they, when the session stopped or was terminated, that they released the data line back to a high voltage state. This is left over from the telegraph era, when the data line between the telegraph stations was left at a high voltage or powered state to show to both operators on either end that neither the equipment sending out the telegraph signals nor the line itself was damaged or broken in any way. That's it for this episode of PMON Monthly. Check out the Digilent blog at blog.digilentinc.com to see what else Digilent is up to, or feel free to post on the Digilent forum if you have any questions. See you next time. Hey, so if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to click up there to subscribe or click down there to watch some more videos. Don't forget to check out our website, www.digilentinc.com. And thanks for watching.